What is up? Welcome back to Team Dirty Decks. Me and my friend here are pa practicing some set three. We are getting ready for Gen Con. I think that I'm going to be taking Blue Nami. It just says like a pick. I just really like the concept of this deck. I kind of like mill decks. Um, we'll see because Kabaje is going to be banned the moment that set three drops. So I am trying it without that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go first. I'm going to go ahead and play Buggy and grab a Mr. One. Uh, Mr. One is very good because you can recycle your uh, your gum gum gavels. I'm not sure what the translation is going to be, but on here it's like a gum gum gavel, or you can recycle your uh, rubber bands of dooms, which just help you mill even more. And also the thing, the really good thing about Buggy is that it is a tap one mill one technically, because you are thinning your deck by grabbing that card out of your hand. So that's also really good. And then. Uh, for your three dawn turn, you're usually always going to want to use Sanji's Pilaf, which is just a pot of greed. You tap three, draw two cards. Very good. And right now he's swinging at me for five. Um, and you, if anybody ever swings at you for five, like, and you can definitely combo out easily like that, you always want to combo out. And we're not going to be able to play Zeph too many times against Luchi, so we're going to combo away the Zeph because we also have another one in hand. Oh my god, broken. Seeing the Impel down All-Stars in life, drawing two cards. This is why you play four Desert Spada and four Impel down All-Stars in Blue Nami, because it's just the fact that like you're playing four Pilaf, you're playing four... If you're literally playing like 12 cards, that could just trigger, draw two cards. So you're guaranteed, like just statistically speaking, one of them is going to end up in your life, right? So we're going to go ahead and play uh, Buggy, and we're going to go ahead and grab Deathwink. And now I looked at my deck when that happened. I now know that I have two gavels in the last eight cards of my deck. And I know that a gavel is the last, I mean, the second to last card in my deck. Uh, another really good thing about Buggy is that he gives you information. So whenever you're looking at that, you have to remember what the bottom four cards of your deck are, or bottom eight cards are because you are going to get there eventually. So that also helps you a lot in Blue Nami. That's why I really like Buggy in this deck. And he's just swinging me for five. We're gonna combo out because that's easy. Easy clap. Whenever they're swinging at you for like fives or sixes, uh, I usually always try and combo out of those because uh, you, try, you need to keep your life high because eventually they are going to build a really big board on you and you're gonna have to like go, th you're probably gonna have to survive like one to two really hard turns to get through. Uh, we're going to go ahead and probably play Zeph, bounce Buggy back to hand. We're going to trash two cards. And then if he lets me keep Zeph on field, like it, just having the Zeph on field is really good. We're going to tap one. We're going to grab a Rubber Band of Doom. We're going to tap another Dawn to grab another Rubber Band of Doom back into our hand. And it, the reason why I'm doing, I'm tapping out, you usually don't want to tap out as Nami, but he only has two swings really unless he feels like swinging borsalino which i don't think he's going to do unless he can pop zeph so um when he does this when also when you tap out it baits your opponent into swinging five thinking you're not going to be able to combo out but that's why i bounced buggy back to my hand i actually had a decent amount of 2k i mean i just had like two 1ks in my hand uh so with these cards unless he combos really high which is just good for me then i'll just take that hit uh, but if he's swinging at me with 5Ks, like, it's going to be fine. And I'll just be able to combo out of those. Oh, he does end up swinging with Borsalino. So he probably has something to pop my Zeph. But he doesn't. He just plays Ishio to make me drop two cards. Uh, which is good that I use Mr. One then to grab back two cards. So that I'm just dropping one of those rubber bands of dooms. Um, Ishio is really good in this meta. Like, it, Black gets a really big power boost uh, in set three. And... Now he's tapped, and I'm probably, I think I'm going to attach three Dawn here, just go nine, and then I'm going to get multiple 2Ks out of his hand, because the goal with this isn't usually to like fully just make sure that uh, you get the hit in. If he combos up to 10K, now he only has four cards in his hand, that's less cards for him to swing at me with, or to restand his leader with, so you don't really need the swing to guaranteed go through because you have so many cards that just mill yourself but you do need it to threaten to make them drop cards if you don't have anything like zeph or bellamere in your deck uh it's very difficult to survive like you need something like that to make them drop cards he's gonna go ahead and swing him with nine that is a magic number versus nami because even if i 
um, use a 4k counter here. I would still need to combo another card afterwards. Yeah, I think that a better... I, it looks like I'm thinking Gum Gum Rain, but I think a better move would be to do Desert Spada. But I think I'm going to be greedy, and I'm going to drop the Gum Gum Rain and then use Desert Spada so I can Death Wink and draw two cards. Yep, that is what I'm going to go ahead and do. We trash the two cards, and then I use this to get out of it also. And I do notice that there is a Sanji's Pilaf. So, I mean, it ends up working out because now the Pilaf is on top. And if he swings at me with another 9k, which he probably will do. Oh, never mind. He plays 10 drop Kuzan. And then he pops my Zeph. So he doesn't have to deal with it anymore. Which that's a really good play. But I knew that Pilaf was coming. So now I knew that I was going to refill my hand a little bit. And I could... The only thing I could swing at is the 9k, and I don't feel like putting that much Dawn on my leader. So I'm just going to probably pass here, because I have two Death Wink and an Overheat. So it's better, because I can't even use all of these cards. I have to decide whether I want to use a Death Wink and an Overheat, or two Death Wink. I'm probably going to Overheat and then Death Wink, so I get a draw. But Death Wink... Uh, I think I take one, actually. Ah, so then I... Okay, that's actually smart. Man, that, old me is smarter than, than, than current me commentating this match. Uh, that's actually better. Yeah, I'd use that bounce the 1k to get out of it. And then now I can death wink, draws a card. Oh my god, big brain. Jeez. Past Matthew is playing the game is goaded. And then, ooh, I knew it was a trigger card. It's funny, I actually heard myself talking. <laughs> and I literally, in game, I also... He was like, I know this is a trigger card. So this is really good for me now. A lot of some people might not think this is a great hand, but this is an amazing hand right now. We have Kaya, Zeph, Love Love Beam, and Deathwink. Look, I told him I was like, he thinks he can pressure me. But what he doesn't know is that I have Love Love Beam and a Zeph in my hand. So now, oh my god, broken. Peel off, draw two more cards, and then I probably pass here. I might is there a 5k? There's not even a 5k on board. Oh, I'm getting frisky. And then I have to drop two cards now. I'm probably going to drop Brickfist because I have Overheat now. Brickfist and Deathwink. Yeah. And then now I have uh, Overheat so I can bounce the Kai back to my hand if he doesn't pop it. And then uh, I think I'm going to be one short though. I can't use all of the counters in my hand because I only have six Dawn. Here might take. Oh, I could level up beam and then rubber band of doom. Or overheat, then rubber band of doom to get out of it. Yeah. I could have also just comboed the Kaya to keep... No, I think that was actually better because I, the Dawn was so awkward. Um, I don't want to level... I, I think I want to level up beam here, Kaya. Because I just want to keep the the death wink live i want to keep that death wink for later because i know i'm getting low in my deck and i know i'm going to see a gavel so then he's going to swing seven yeah seven at lead here level of beam for sure gets out of it and then it draws a card yeah he swings 10 and then i have to take it here and then I'm thinking about using trigger effects to, to bounce somebody just so he has less swings. But I, I was, but then I don't want to really do that because I want to keep the combo power. Because the Deathwing gets me out of a 10k swing. So he has a bunch of blockers on field. This hand is looking pretty spicy. I think I Kaya here. Yeah, Kaya dropped that drop breakfast easy and now i'm considering buggy here because i know that there was a gavel on the bottom and i'm pretty sure i remember putting it like the second to last card in the bottom of the deck or something like that but i need that gavel to be the next card that i can possibly draw is like i think that the closest i can get to the top of the deck is four like right because you get to manipulate the bottom four cards of your deck and i have six cards in deck right now so i play buggy and i grab mr one and this is something that I've realized is kind of messed up about the card sim. 
Right now it says select card to place on current bottom of deck. So in my head, I'm like, yeah, this, so I'm putting this on the bottom of my deck right now. And then at, in order, it's gonna go ascending. So right now the gavel should be the fourth card in deck, right? Cause I have five cards. So the gavel should be the fourth card is what I'm thinking. So now in my head, I'm like, I just need to get to that gavel. I need to draw two cards. And since I have a Deathwink and a Love Love Beam, I'm like, I should be able to get there, right? So then I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, okay, cool. I can combo um, Gum Gum Rain and Love Love Beam, and that'll get me to 12, and it'll draw me a card. Then I do Gung Rain, and I'm like, okay, cool, now I'm out of the attack. Now I just need to draw one more card. So then I'm sitting here thinking like, oh, I could waste like a card like on the next swing. I'm like really considering Kaya into Deathwink so that I could draw the gavel. But then he swings at me with a 10k and I'm like, crap, I'm actually looking at my deck and I don't think that there's a way to win just off of gavel because I don't have enough Dawn to Deathwink twice now. So I'm like, shoot, I think that this has to be a trigger effect. I was like, whatever my last life is has to be a trigger effect for me to win. So I think this kind of comes down to RNG. So then I'm taking this and it ends up being a Desert Spada. Broken. Blue Nami players always see it. And then this is where I realize that this, this sim is kind of messed up. Because I'm looking at this and I'm like, wait, this shouldn't be a Desert Spada. This should be a Gavel, right? So then I'm like, wait, do I lose now? I was like, I think that I lose. I was like, but I do have a Desert Spada again. Luckily, I drew into another, like I drew into the Desert Spada. So then I redo my deck again. And I instead, I go Ascending Order. Because I'm like, oh, it's the other way. So now I know that Gavel is the very next card instead. Which I could have already won earlier. But I had to use Desert Spotted to put the gavel on top again. And then now I Deathwink. And now I'm talking about that. How I was like, this is messed up. And then now I gavel. And then I can just drop the Deathwink and uh, mill. And then I can trash the top two cards. And then I end up winning. But that was funny. So if you didn't know on the sim, even though it's saying current cards on the bottom of the deck, I wasn't actually placing them in the order that I thought I was. I thought that it was going like the first card that you pick is going to be like the bottom. And then you're stacking on top but it's actually the opposite direction, which almost cost me the game there. But at the same time, I only won because I had a desert spot in life, you know? And that's just how life goes. But thank you very much for watching. Blue Nami is a lot of fun to play. For me, I don't know how much fun it is for the opponent, but I'm thinking about taking this to Gen Con. Maybe I can just bait people mentally. Maybe I can just win the mental battle. Like they're so mad that they can't get to me because I keep comboing, just countering out of everything with event cards and I'm not even playing with them. Maybe that's how I win. Maybe that's how I get the edge. <laughs> but uh, I might be playing this for set three or ace. Like we'll see, we'll just keep practicing and then we'll figure it out. We have all the way until August, but until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.